Let's begin with a question. Is it necessary to teach fractions before teaching decimals? For many years, fractions have been taught first in schools and then used to teach decimals. And this is still being done. The main reason for this practice may be that fractions have been around for over 5,000 years, while decimals have been around for less than 500 years. The first lesson in this series of videos will help you answer that question. Here is a model for decimals and percents. Each square with red shading has 10 equal parts. So we can describe the square by saying it has three parts are shaded, the square has 10 equal parts, or three parts out of 10 are shaded. The green squares each have 100 parts. There are 10 little parts in each column. So the 35 parts out of 100, we can say the square has 100 parts and 35 parts are shaded. Now the yellow squares have a thousand tiny parts. And to help see those parts, we'll use a larger square. Now this block down here has 10, it's 5 and 5, so we'll just identify that block that has 10 parts. And there's 10 of these blocks in a column, so each column has 100 parts. So there's 100, 200, 3, 4, 5, 6, 700, and then we've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 75. So it's just all of those in there. So this square can be described by saying it has 1,000 equal parts and 775 are shaded, or 775 parts out of 1,000 are shaded. Notice that we can describe these three types of squares by using just whole numbers. This provides a non-threatening introduction. For the early grades, it's best to start with just the red and green squares. Students can sort this deck of squares and look for patterns in the shaded amounts. They will find that there's nine different red squares, 19 different green squares, and if they use the yellow squares, there are 29 squares for a total of 57 decimal squares in a deck. After students are familiar with describing shaded amounts with whole numbers, we can bring in decimals. The decimal for three parts out of ten is 0.3. And the name of this decimal is three tenths. The decimal for 35 parts out of 100 is 0.35, and the name of this decimal is 35 hundredths. The decimal for 675 parts out of 1,000, 675 parts out of 1,000 is 0.675, and the name of this decimal is 675 thousandths. One activity would be having students select decimal squares and write the decimal for the shaded amount. Conversely, for a given decimal, students can shade a blank decimal square. For this square, they would shade four columns. the decimal point four. And a square for hundreds. Let's shade the first column. There's ten, ten twenty, three, twenty three parts out of a hundred, the decimal point two three. For this square with a thousand parts, remember there's a hundred tiny parts in this first column. So there's a hundred. And then there's ten in each block here. 10, 20, 30, 35, 37. So that is the shading for the square for 137 thousandths. The shading of blank squares can be creative. Two six are 26 hundreds 
have been shaded for this square. In this example, 0.4, or 4 parts out of 10, have been shaded. In one final example, 4 hundredths, or 4 parts out of 100, have been shaded for this square. Notice that we cannot use 0.4 for 4 parts out of 100, because 0.4 is a decimal for a square with 10 parts and 4 parts shaded. Once decimals are introduced, they can be used to talk about parts of things and applications. For first or second graders, this square could represent a cake with 7 tenths left. Students can make up stories, such as 3 parts of the cake have been eaten. For older students, who have seen tenths of a pound on bathroom scales, if one whole square represents one pound, then this square represents seven-tenths of a pound. Suppose it costs 65 cents to mail an oversized envelope. If one whole square represents one dollar, then this square represents sixty-five hundredths of a dollar. In track meets, time is measured two thousandths of a second. If this whole square represents one second, then the shaded amount of the square represents 125 thousandths of a second. There are eight games on decimalsquares.com. We will look at the first game, Beat the Clock. This game can be played against the clock or against another player. We will select the clock. Maria enters her name Selects the beginner level. Selects 40 seconds for the clock time. And clicks the square to start. Types the decimal and clicks the clock to check the answer. Then clicks the clock again for the next square. Maria is doing very well. She knows her decimals. This video has used decimal squares, a region model, for illustrating decimal symbols with understanding. And we did not use fractions. In fact, fractions are so difficult to teach, it might make sense to teach decimals before teaching fractions.